Hello, everyone. I'm Paolo Arduino. I'm the CEO at Tether. Tether um, is known as to be the biggest stablecoin in the market. What is a stablecoin? It's a digital dollar. It's a digital dollar that leverages um, one of the most important, beautiful technologies built in the last 20 years and 30 years in the financial uh, ecosystem, that is the blockchain. So stablecoins are digital dollars that use blockchain technology to move. So today I want to talk to you about um, our approach to um, expanding our uh, market share in the world. Today, USDT has $183 billion in issued stablecoins. We have in our reserves $183 billion plus $7 billion of excess reserves plus $23 billion of undistributed profits that we're keeping in the company to keep build out the global footprint for the new generation of dollars for the most used dollar in the world that today has more than 500 million users. Why we have so many users? Why this technology is so important? That is the most important chart in the history. So if you see the top line of that chart, you see that is the US dollar. Look at the Argentinian peso. The peso, Argentinian peso, lost 94.5% of its value against the US dollar in the last 10 years. The Turkish lira lost an enormous amount of value, the, um, the uh, Venezuelan Bolivar as well. Imagine you are a father, a mother, a family that lives in these countries. You work from January to December. You work 12 months. At the end of the year, you are poorer compared to the beginning of the year. So in order to uh, help these uh, communities, these countries, we have created the best product that actually solved the, even the biggest picture. That is a chart of all the currencies on the world, or many of the currencies of the world, and that is their performance against the US dollar. So what Tether created in 2014 is the simplest but most powerful product and export from the United States. That is a tokenized version of the dollar. These are some headlines for news, from newspapers. Um, you have uh, the impact of uh, USDT in Lebanon, uh, in uh, Nigeria, in, um, in Argentina, in Brazil, and so on. All these uh, communities in these countries are all turning to USDT as their lifeline. They have been um, looking for alternatives for a long time, going in the streets, buying cash dollars, putting them under the pillow is becoming very, very dangerous. And again, the incredible growth of use cases also has been um, parabolic. Started in 2014 as a cryptocurrency um, settlement tool. So you had Bitcoin on one side. You needed, in 2014, to use something that would move on the same transport layer of Bitcoin, so on the blockchain. You needed a dollar that would move on blockchain. That's what we created in 2014. But with 2020 coming, with a pandemic coming, something changed. Entire economies and the decline of these entire economies in emerging markets, developing countries, started to fall much faster against the, the Western economies, against US, Europe. Um, and so the, um, the, the growth uh, of the use cases uh, continued. Right now, instead of uh, being 100% uh, cryptocurrency, settlement tool, actually the vast majority of USDT use cases are commodity trading. That is growing very rapidly. rapidly. All the biggest commodity traders in the world work with us. Commodity traders are using um, USDT in order to turn around their balance sheet many more times per week, per month, per year, to maximize their profits. Today, uh, especially after the pandemic, to send a wire even you know through correspondent banks from like a western country to an emerging market might take three four five days that is an enormous amount of time that is an eternity for commodity traders so usdt is becoming more and more one of the preferred choices for settling commodity trades but it's not only that we saw talk about um uh, payments well peer-to-peer pay -peer payments 
and uh, cross-border payments, settling voices across countries, participating to the um, creator's economy for social media platforms. All these use cases are growing extremely, extremely rapidly. So, um, well, this is a long list of uh, the current use cases. Again, think about 500 million people in the merging markets are using USDT today. So it's not hypothetical. You know, if imagine in 2014, I would have come here saying, oh, we are going to build um, a dollar that has uh, in 10 years the ability to reach 500 million people in the emerging markets. And today, and in 10 years, would make more profits than Goldman Sachs. Last year, Tether averaged around 13.7 billion in profits. And this year, pretty much can do the same, slightly higher. So this is the power of the creation of the biggest distribution network in the human history for money. I describe money as the ultimate social network because especially when it comes, when it becomes programmable money, like stable coins, it can transport information and it can transport value all at the same time. So money connects people throughout the human history in the past 5,000 years, money always connected people. It was um, the medium of exchange. People were meeting um, to buy and sell things. And that is one of the most important constructs of our society. This is a chart that our growth and user base. Tether, until 2014, actually even now, I would say, including year to date, 2025, in the history of Tether, we spent less than $15 million in marketing. So we reached 500 million users, $183 billion in market cap, and we are growing, our market cap is growing at a pace of 1 billion every three days. I wish I could say, tell you that uh, it all happened because we were perfect, we predicted everything. Actually not. If you create a product that people need, and is representing a lifeline for hundreds of millions of people. Actually, there are 3 billion people in the world that are underserved, that are underbanked, they don't have access to traditional financial means. They are not banked, not because they are bad people, but just simply because they are too poor of being of interest to the banks, because they don't have $150 per year to pay for the bank account. The average salary at a person in Africa is $2 per day, $150 per year is too much. So this is the reason. So this is the reason why we grew so much and so fast. Um, the global unbanked population can vary from between 1.4 to 3 billion people. Then you have the underserved, the ones that uh, you know um, have been screwed by super high fees for remittances. Think about the fact. And another great reason why people turn to USDT is that in all the emerging markets in developing countries, the average. Uh, part of the GDP for remittances is between 20 to 60 percent, and they are uh, the people that work, you know, the fathers of the families that work in the Western world, like in the United States or Europe, that want to send money back home, like in Africa or in Philippines, for example, they are charged between 6 and 26 percent. With USDT, they are charged zero. Of course, that chart that we saw before grows super rapidly, because it's a word of mouth. Well, people are sick and tired to be screwed by the traditional financial system. We are actually here to work with the, the traditional financial system, but provide better means to provide better inclusion. I think one of the biggest honors that we had at Tether is actually representing the biggest financial inclusion success in the history of humanity with 500 million users that were left behind. This is our manifesto. We believe in the importance of stability. A journalist a little bit ago in an interview asked me how I would define in two words a Tether. He suggested the stable coin company. I said, no, Tether is the stable company. It's a company which mission is to bring stability to the world, to, bring, to use technology, to use finance, to create accessibility, to create inclusion, to create, again, stability. And so this is one of the most important aspects of, uh, of our plan in the future is to, and we identified four verticals in order to achieve stability in society. A, the first one is stable finance. So building through financial rails and two new forms of money or better forms of money or more digital forms of money or more accessible forms of money, a layer for accessibility for 500 million users up to 3 billion 
uh, people in the world, up to 8 billion people, actually. The second one is stable communications. So make sure that not only money is accessible, but also have access to good forms of telecommunication that can scale also in poorer areas like Africa, on Central Africa. That is not happening today. We cannot pretend as a society, as humanity, to keep moving forward if we are leaving behind not a niche of the population, but half of the world population. Third one is stable energy. This is a great project that we're doing. We are building in Africa. We did this pilot. With, uh, we built 500 kiosks in Africa with solar panels on top, batteries inside that are rechargeable batteries. We are selling subscriptions for three USDT per month to the people in the villages. We have 500,000 users already. We need several, several million of battery swaps in these villages. Our plan is by 2030 to build now that we prove the concept is growing very rapidly and the demand is insane, we are going to build 100,000 kiosks by 2030 to serve 30 million households and 120 million people. This is a change that you can see from space because Central Africa during night is dark and we are going to light it up. The fourth one is again, is intelligence. We cannot pretend we talk about AI a lot, everything, everyone is talking about AI. We cannot bring humanity forward if there is half of the population in the world that does not have access to stable intelligence. So we are building platforms with Tether that bring, and we, we just launched the first app of this platform called QVAC. We are bringing um, AI towards the user devices. We build a platform, an AI platform that can run on an $80 smartphone that is very much popular in, in Africa, for example, can run on any other smartphone, flagship phone, laptops, any operating system, embedded devices, brain computer interfaces, you name it. So these are the four uh, pillars of our strategy and our vision for the future. And uh, thank you very much for, for your time today.